Oh. Well, look, as the president said, the, there is no problem in using cash. That's what was necessary to satisfy <laughs> this deal, which was a legal case. The reason it was necessary, as the president pointed out, is because sanctions were in place, and you can't right. I'm not uh, asking about the money cash as much, David, as I'm asking about the idea that uh, a ruling that goes back to, to, to 1979 uh, coincidentally is resolved on the same day that these hostages are freed. Look, you hit on the key point. The key point is the timing, and the timing looks very bad. And the State Department and the government should have done a better job of distancing these two separate transactions. And they were separate transactions. One was the settlement of an ongoing case in The Hague, and the other was an, an effort to get these hostages back in a prisoner exchange. Clearly, probably what happened is the Iran insisted on the payment being made for the first transaction in order to fully resolve the second transaction. The U.S. government and the State Department should have resisted that because of the appearance of impropriety. But the reality is there was nothing improper about this. There was nothing illegal about this. And we did accomplish something that was very important, which was releasing these prisoners who should have never been in prison in the first place. Listen, we, we're all happy that these prisoners were released, Kathy, but I, I, I think we might have also accomplished something else that's even more detrimental to Americans, and that's a bigger target on their backs. I mean, if you can get $100 million per, what's to stop any, uh, any, any American in the Middle East in particular from being abducted? That's absolutely right. David just linked these two tra transactions, whether he intended to or not. There's just no way that after 37 years and nine judges, three, three Iranian and three from other territories, that it just happens to be that on this day in April, this all comes together. It's literally impossible. But as you said, Charles, what's so much more alarming is that President Obama again has disavowed the rules and he's thrown away our traditions. And what do traditions do? They sow a path for behavior. They give a sense of our moral values. By throwing that to the wind, he's basically said America's open for business. And that is very, very dangerous. His legacy is going to be his image on the get out of jail free card because that's what he's done this week, both with criminals right. in this country and with the Iranians. Uh, Christian, you know, the idea that maybe the Iranians held this, uh, the hostage swap uh, over, uh, held it up before so the other thing could be resolved, to a degree that is an admission then that they were related. I think so. And then Pastor Abedini, who I believe, if I recall correctly, was held prisoner uh, because of his faith, basically. Um, you know, so instead of, of, of doing things like pressuring Iran to come around on human rights, to respect dissenting different views of faith, to improve their um, situation with dissidents like the ones we saw in the streets in Iran in 2009, 2010, this administration didn't do that. It looks very much like a quid pro quo. And it's bogus to say that they were trying to resolve some litigation from 1979. That was with the previous regime. This is a different government. There is no need ever to resolve that. Uh, it just looks, I think, anyone in Congress, any reasonable voter would see that this is a payoff. Yeah, the, the litigation well, risk or the notion we would actually have to pay $10 billion as, as opposed to $1.7 billion. Go ahead, Lisa. Well, Charles, it also speaks to the weakness of President Obama and this, this mentality of continuing to be friend or enemy and alienating our friends. We continue to reward a country that chants death to America. We, the idea, Iran's ideal of U.S. Uh, policy or U.S. relationships is putting 10 soldiers on their knees and pointing guns at their heads. But we continue to reward a country who that is their mentality outlook on U.S. and our relations to the Washington Post has said in an editorial that Iran continues to exploit loopholes within the deal. And, and this is the broader problem, the weakness of this administration. David, you were a former Obama campaign foreign advisor, State Department official. Uh, the, the, the idea that late, late last night we heard that uh, that there were folks in the Justice Department, uh, senior folks who said, come on, this is ridiculous. Uh, let's do this at a different time, but that they were overruled. That also adds a lot of fuel to the fire. I mean, this is not some kind of crazy far out tinfoil hat stuff. It seems pretty easy to connect these dots. Well, it seems that in this case, the Department of Justice lawyers gave good advice to the administration. Now, we don't know why the administration couldn't follow it. My guess is that Iran, you know, insisted on finalizing both of these tr transactions at the same time. Does so that why, look why, bad? Why yes. Did, why well, did, hold why on a second. Why was Iran always hold in the driver's seat?
Let me finish. Does that look bad? Yes. Is it illegal? No. Does it violate a U.S. policy? No. And if anyone who thinks that any prisoner exchange where you get a hostage released can go cleanly and nicely and it's, it, and it's a nice business, are you advocating it lives paying, in La Are you La advocating land. paying ransom for, 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 for hostages, then the government, federal, uh, America paying ransom? You think that's okay? I am absolutely not advocating that. But you just that. said that's what they and did. That is not what I said right. they, they did. did. They did not do that. These were two separate transactions. You're but saying Iran... the Iranians insisted to be paid at the same time of this transaction. That exactly. inherently links them. How can you then separate them? We just Iran... paid for hostages. Iran linked them, but they are two separate transactions, it. which the U.S. agreed. It should not have, but it did agree to resolve both transactions on the same day to please Iran. It did not break the law. It did not break a policy. Does it look bad? Yes. But we got our prisoners back, and we never get prisoners back in a nice way. This is an ugly business, and it was an ugly thing for Iran to have taken the prisoners in the first place, but it's a good thing we have them and they're back here in the U.S., and they're safe. Christian, of course, that wasn't the story that President Obama told today, and he's probably glad he didn't. Maybe, David, I'd give you credit for, for being a...